Yetunde Odubeson Omeje. Welcome, Professor Ibo. Good evening, everyone. I stand on existing protocols, and it's an honor to be able to give this address today. As a Nigerian American, born and raised in Newark, New Jersey, at University Hospital, I am a first generation Nigerian. My parents came here years ago. Like many others, I am the story of Nigeria. We often talk about brain, <laughs> we often talk about brain drain, but let us focus on brain gain. Nigerians in the diaspora all over the world have been able to be the ambassadors of Nigeria. We have been able to represent the country in tumultuous times. We have been able to rewrite and change some of the narratives that have come out of Nigeria. We answered the call of duty that said in our first national anthem on October 1st, 1960, there was a part that said, no matter the tribe or tongue, in brotherhood we stand. And we have in the diaspora been able to come together and unify ourselves, understanding that there were various internal and external threats that oftentimes try to undo the beautiful story of Nigeria. We pulled up our bootstraps. We took some parts of the American dream. We took the culture of Nigeria. And we went out into the world so that whenever you heard a Nigerian name, it was synonymous with excellence. Whenever you heard a Nigerian name, it was synonymous with hard work. Whenever you heard a Nigerian name, you knew that education was paramount in the household. It wasn't just upbringing, it was a culture. It's an African culture. It is a Nigerian culture. So I don't tend to use this platform to focus on the issues that are not peculiar to Nigeria, the issues that are global issues that other countries also endure, but to focus on the glory of what Nigeria is. I am a testament to that. Born and raised here, I took the culture. I look at the world in a dual vision. I am a product of the American dream. I am the product of my Nigerian parents' prayers. And I understood that wherever I go, I was a representative not only of my home, but of my other home, right? Nigerian home. And that when I would walk into meetings and when I would be the youngest person on the board or the youngest faculty or the only woman of color, I knew that there was more things that I had to represent than just myself or just my qualifications or just where I'd been at. There was a generation that was just like me, first generations who were just like me, who were born here in the United States who also had that call to duty. There's a part in that anthem, in our national anthem, that says, it is a great gain to be able to pass the flag to future generations without stain. And one thing I want to say is that, you know, the, the generation that we have now is a different generation. They're not the generation of the 60s, of the 70s, of the 80s, or of the 90s. We are a generation with so many things that are at our disposal a generation that is exposed to the many global issues that are out there, a generation, if tapped into, can be the human capital of the world. That is what we have been able to do. So the brain gain that all the other countries have experienced by Nigerians in diaspora is one of our glories. That is the new turning point. That is what Toby Amosun, who is the fastest hurdler in the world, I look at her with almost symbolic as a baton basically saying, here's the baton to the next generation. How will you rewrite the new future? How will you patch or make things or be the bridge back home? How will you be able to change some of the global narratives that are there? Any issues that the country face, I always say they're not peculiar to Nigeria. They're not the only story of Nigeria. 
Chimamanda Adichie said, always beware of the danger of a single story. The ability to pick up your phone and only hear negative news. The, 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 the cynicism that often comes about with inundated with the things that are going wrong. Can we take today to focus on what has went right? Can we take a day to focus on the things that we have accomplished as a country? There's nowhere in the world that you will not see, even in high positions, a Nigerian that is there. There is not one person that you can't account to that doesn't have a medal or a recognition of the highest degree that comes from our homeland. Those are things that are glorious, despite the checkered history, despite whatever issues they may face. We are the ambassadors. And I often plea unto the young people who are the first generations Nigerians to also understand that you too have a call to duty. That when we sing that national anthem, when you sing the American national anthem, you remember your own anthem, the anthem of your parents, the struggles that they also went to, to, to have you here, to raise you here. Now you are afforded with this exposure, with the opportunity, and what will you do with it? Our accomplishments are not just our own. We have a responsibility to ensure that the next generation is trained to be the leaders that we need, whether here or back home. My call and my responsibility is to ensure that the same experience, the same opportunities that I've had here in the United States should also be the same experience and, and opportunities that someone who was born in Nigeria or in any other country should also have. My geographic location should not be what promotes my potential. And the vast potential and human capacity that we have in Nigeria, that continues to need to be nurtured, needs to be protected, and it needs to be tapped into. Many of the issues and the solutions to it also are in the hands of the generation that oftentimes are overlooked. The generation that can see the issues and be quick on their feet, who are fast thinkers, who have exposure to some of the resources that can change many of the narratives that come out of Africa. But today we celebrate the triumphs and the accomplishments of so many people in the diaspora and back home who despite whatever they may have space, continue to persevere, continue to move forward, continue to hurdle to glory. As the country continues to go in the election phase and we are you know, transitioning into a new leadership, my hope is that we continue to protect, we continue to serve, and we continue to lead the country into glory so that we are a beacon of light of leadership not only on the continent, but in the world. I want all of us to continue to be the ambassadors that we are called to be, to continue to write the beautiful story of Nigeria, that no matter where we go, the respect, the leg legitimacy, the credibility is found in our hands. It's not just the responsibility of elected officials. It also takes the responsibility of active citizenry. It takes the responsibility of good and ethical and integral citizens here and back home to continue to move the country forward. We are the beacon of light in the African continent, and we will continue to be. And we join hands with other African countries. We join hands with all of our global partners and well-wishers that we will continue to use all of our resources that are available to us, that are natural to us, that are protected for us, to move the agenda of what is excellent about Nigeria forward. I thank you for having me here today. I thank the mayor for honoring Nigeria and for always continuing to create commissions that excel and that do well. I remember years ago under Mayor Cory Booker, we had an African commission and I was the chair for humanitarian affairs and social advocacy right here while I was a graduate student at Rutgers. And um, we're here now years later and I'm happy that the tradition continues, that no matter the leadership and position, that the country continues to be recognized. Thank you so much today and I wish Nigeria a blessed leadership and a blessed election season and for us to continue to move forward in the way of excellence. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, you are clapping for me. Please put your hands together for our keynote speaker, former Clinton Global Initiative Ambassador, Professor Yetude Omede. Wow.